Yeah, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Nehemiah, aka Neo, and today we're going to be talking about this Dever Nuggets Golden State Warriors game. This is a game that I was very highly anticipated by. Oh, I don't think I said that right, but you guys get the gist. I was really excited for this game. I was really excited to see a guy like Nikola Jokic being on the floor. And yeah, even though you, you look at the, like the plus minuses, Nikola Jokic was all over the game. This was pretty much only because they choked that lead a lot. And especially during that last minute, I don't know what happened, but it was not looking good. But I definitely want to talk about the game, at least more in a general sense. And then I want to look at some film about some of the things that we could just look at for both of these teams, especially the Denver Nuggets, because it's looking like they may be one of the best offenses along with the Pelicans this season. And it's going to be crazy. But let's just get hop into it. Now, this dude, Nikola Jokic, made these two look like a superstar. This dude, Bruce Brown and Catavius Cabo Pope were balling. And keep in mind, this is the Denver Nuggets without their second best player. Or third, depending on how good Michael Porter Jr. is going into this season. I understand that Michael Porter is definitely a guy who's going to shoot a lot of threes. You know, he shot 50% from three and... Like, I would pull up some of these threes right now, but honestly, I just want to do it more so when we get to the film section. But this dude would be made, he's this is what I'd be saying. So, this dude would be tossing up bullshit and it somehow goes in. I don't get it. I don't get it. Same thing with Catavius Caldwell Pope and Bruce Bound were also getting really good threes, mostly because of the Jokic's gravity. He was able to create a lot of shots. He was also able to create a lot of pressure from Draymond Green and their other centers because that boy was shooting a lot of free throws today. A really nice triple double. He even got three offensive rebounds, which is really nice for a guy like Nikola Jokic. And overall, this team was just almost always in sync at every time that they were on the full court, especially when Nikola Jokic was on the court. When we had a guy like Bruce Brown or even like uh, Bones Holland, even just handling the ball, they were doing competent stuff, but it wasn't anything like Nikola Jokic was doing. So I do think that when Jamal Murray does come back and he's fully healthy, I think that a lot of these secondary ball handlers that we've seen in this game aren't going to be the same thing. And I think that we're just going to see a lot more Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr. pick and rolls, maybe even pick and pops, or even maybe even like an Aaron Gordon um, type of play. But also this dude, Aaron Gordon, need to stop shooting, bro. Like th this is OD. Like you got to stop. This dude was five for six from two point, and he did not make a single fucking three, bro. Like, I'm sorry. Every time I see him pick up the ball at the three-point line, bro, I get irritated. But let's move on to the Warriors a little bit. One more thing, though. I do think that the acquisition of these two are definitely going to go through the long run or go well in the long run, especially even this guy. These guys are really good defensively, and they do really help on Nikola Jokic's really worst problem and that's just the screen navigation he's not really the best when it comes to pick and roll defense and that's where those guys do really just come into fruition as one of the best players to have alongside Nikola Jokic I think when we're looking at the best pairing for Nikola Jokic I'm not necessarily even thinking three and D I'm just thinking of people who are able to cut which is something that Bruce Brown is really good at and people who are able to at least be competent defenders on that end and I think that the Denver Nuggets really did fulfill for, uh, that type of role. Now, personally, in my opinion, I do think that the core of the Warriors, at least in terms of their bench, is starting to give out. And we kind of see this with the plus minus numbers, though I will say that the plus, numbers, plus and minus numbers, especially at the very end of the game, did kind of get saturated or oversaturated a little bit, especially even on this end, because the Denver Nuggets, while they did go crazy when these guys weren't in the game, I would say when these guys were in the game, it wasn't necessarily that bad. It was more so just like specific parts of the game, especially like the later half of the second quarter. I don't even think that most of these guys were on the court, but on that second half of that, oh yeah, the second half of the second quarter, they were just going crazy. And I don't think that like these guys really should really be as, let, let me find out the words. I think that the minutes that they got were solid, no doubt about it, but I do think that they did gut a lot of their depth last year, especially comparing it to this year. Now, if I do want to say one thing about their depth, they still do have a guy like Jordan Poole. However, he's having a really slow start to the season so far. Now, I'm not going to talk about this Draymond Green situation anymore. I think it's very, very oversaturated at this point. We already have a lot of talk about it. I will say, though, 
is looking like he's a completely different player. Like he's doing all the same moves, but he's doing them in a less desirable way that you want a guy like Jordan Poole to do it. You know, him only taking five shots is crazy, especially when a guy like Andrew Wiggins is taking 17. Honestly, it looks, I don't know. Jordan Poole just looks off right now. Maybe it's an injury. Maybe it's just a mental blockage. I don't know. But overall, I do think that the bench of the Warriors definitely do does need something a little bit more because I don't think that they have the depth that they had last year. No doubt about it. They had a guy like Gary Payne. I think it was Otto Porter and even Juan Toscano Anderson. They even had Damian Lee, who was also providing a lot of spark minutes. And I, I wouldn't say that some of them are better than these guys, but I do think that they were able to at least plug in play like almost immediately. I think that if I were to say Jordan or not Jordan Poole, Gary Payne would definitely be after Jordan Poole and then Otto Porter Jr. would definitely be after him. And those are two big, I think that there's definitely a big gap between them and everyone else on this roster, especially a guy like James Wiseman and coming in. They definitely, they definitely did look kind of new to the game, even still. But overall, I do think that Jordan Poole's minutes were just not it, especially when we look at the plus minus. But I do think of the plus minus again. Very flawed. Curry did look great. I do think that the best player on the court was Jokic, though. And that definitely did say something. Now, I didn't see it live because I actually did exit out the game early. But the Clay Thompson three at the end was some weird, bro. I just, you, you could not pay me to say what, what he was thinking. But I do think that this was a solid game from Draymond. The only thing, especially with a nice assist, I didn't even notice that. Looking through the game, it, it kind of didn't seem like he was doing that much on the offensive end. But now, at least recalling some of the plays, they did, they definitely did do a lot to maximize his playmaking. That being said, it did not seem like Curry played 35 minutes. He played like 20, bro, at least in my uh, recollection. And even like a guy like Andrew Wiggins definitely wasn't able to capitalize off of a lot of the defenders that he was given but you know he still took 17 shots he still took a lot of the shots but yeah let's just get into these some of these plays some of the things that i do want to talk about some of the things that i think that are going to bode well for both of these teams later down because i do think that these two are definitely two of the three best teams in the west especially when we consider the clippers i definitely think that one of those three are definitely going to make the finals at least i definitely think that those are my three picks to go to the finals if i were to only get three so yeah Shout out my boy, Mike Malone, because that boy always knows, or excuse me, Michael Malone, because that dude always knows how to get this dude MPJ open, because what we're going to have is this dude just drifting all across the court. You know, he's getting his pin down from Bruce Brown. He's even going to switch places with Contavious Caldwell Pope for a bit. And then this dude is going to get the screen from Nikola Jokic to even just go by. And now he just has this much space. Now, let's just look at one more thing. That boy got Clay looking, I don't know. That dude was just not paying attention. So he just hit the shot. That's what you really want to see from the Nuggets. They just know how to get a lot of these shooters open, especially in a very effective way. That's the type of shot that Michael Porter Jr. definitely wants to take, especially even though he's not the best shot creator. He's one of the best shooters in the NBA, hands down. I'm not even going to lie to you. It doesn't matter if it's a dribble handoff from Michael Porter Jr. to Jokic or even Jamal Murray, or even a guy like Monte Morris of last year. It doesn't matter, bro. No matter who's getting it, once Joker sets that pick, bro, you're going to be open. And once, you, once you're once you that open, you're just going to make the shot. Shout out KCP. This is something that I was actually very interested looking into it because a guy like Bruce Brown and Nicole Jokic do have at least some of the chemistry. I do think that Bruce Brown as a cutter, especially in his Brooklyn days, was definitely really good. And I think that this is going to be a perfect pairing because... He knows how to play with the five, especially when it comes to picking and setting and rolling, especially. So I think that when it comes to the, this type of screen, especially when Jokic is the ball handler in this situation, not a lot of teams are actually going to understand what to do. And this is where both these guys are thrown off because they're just going to double team Jokic. But once you double team Jokic, he, he's going to find the open man. We're even going to look at a play later on. This dude just finds open man. It doesn't make sense. And he just goes for the dunk. This is a little play breakdown, but DJ actually got some solid minutes in this game. I was actually very surprised by how he played. I really liked it. This is definitely another example of Jokic's gravity because he's just having so many people on his hip right now. There are three people right here against Jokic. And even though he still doesn't have the ball, it, it just shows how many people are just looking at him, looking at what 
his next move is and trying to get a read on what he's getting read on because a guy like Aaron Gordon is literally cutting. Even if Michael Porter Jr. didn't want to take the shot, he could literally just do, uh, go for a lob, and that's just two easy points. Just shows you how important this dude Jokic is on offense. So when it comes to the result that happened last year when it came to the gentleman sweep, it was definitely a thing where Nikola Jokic definitely just needed more help. And when it comes to that, we look at games like this, and this is where a game he could just dominate, even if he just only has Michael Porter Jr. Because the rest of the Warriors are just super small, especially when they go with a lineup of Poole, Clay, Steph, Draymond, and Wiggins at the center. It it really just means that Nikola Jokic could just run all over them, especially when it comes to the offensive rebounds. So it's going to be very important to look at that going forward if these two were to ever match up in the Western Conference again. And to essentially cap off a essential 20 point lead going into the fourth going into the third excuse me we have really good ball movement from everyone on this team we have a guy like bruce brown in the Jokic pick and roll again this dude just has so many people just looking at his way even a guy like jordan Poole who has to split the defenders he's literally just having to pay attention to both of these guys and even though he does that, he has to look at Nikola Jokic to know his next move to actually have a proper read on the next move of the play. And even though that happens, it has a lot of the defenders scrambling right now. And that just leads to a guy like Michael Porter Jr. to having a very brilliant play off ball, especially. And he just is able to cut in with Nikola Jokic already there so that he's essentially going to be wide open. Boom. This is the part two of Michael Porter just hosting up bullshit. Because what is this, bro? What is this? And these are the type of plays that make that this dude just has eyes in the back of his head. Because what does he do here? Like, like he he doesn't even see this dude. He ha He's using his peripheral vision to even see Moses Moody, who's having, honestly, a defensive collapse. Because why is he out there that early with a guy like Andrew Wilkins is right there? But, bro... How is he making this pass? Who else is in this league is going to make this pass, especially when their eyes are turned behind them? Man, Nikola Jokic is something different. For me, I thought that this play was dead, even though Steph Curry was just roaming around. And once he got this ball, man, it was over. Like, he knew it was over. Bird just shoots up, shoots up. What, what can you really do about that besides, you know, sticking to Curry closer? Same thing here when they were going for the comeback. You know, I think that a guy like KCP and I can't tell who that is right now, but both of them probably should have been a lot more aware of the play going on besides just looking at Clay Thompson going for the layup, especially when these three guys are in the paint right now. That boy, Steph Curry, just had them bite, made him pay. And I would say that overall, what the series could do if they were ever to match up is really just decide how will Jokic attack the pick because a play like this I think that he would have to step up because what we're going to see is like immediately after Curry gets the ball and he is going to get or immediately after Curry gets the ball from Draymond Green he's literally just going to hoist it up so I think that a guy like Nikola Jokic or whoever's the ball or the pick handler they have to understand where Steph Curry is and where they want to approach it because going over the last year's finals i would say that the drop was definitely a good idea for stopping the whole team but if you want to stop steph curry i do think you have to trap him at the ball handler so that's my opinion but even then steph curry is just gonna make steph curry plays and you just gotta tip your cap at him really a really good player this is probably gonna be the last play we're gonna talk about but, you know, Clay Thompson just Clay Thompson. All right, it's been your boy Nehemiah, aka Neo. I hope you guys are having a good one. Now, I will talk about the Warriors more in depth later, and especially when I get a game where I think that the Warriors are at their peak. But I don't think that this was necessarily the Warriors when they were as good as they could be. They did start trying later on in the game, especially the last minute. But I do want to talk about the Warriors when they're trying 48 minutes, and I do want to talk about them when they are playing. Also, a really competitive team. So I want to talk about that. And while I do think that we got enough of what we saw this game to 
to really determine whether or not they can attack Denver's defense enough, which they obviously can. I do want to see a better showcase of it rather than this game itself. So yeah.